back to the Artie Lang Show. This is Artie Lang, along with Brett Stover. Sitting to my left is a uh, fellow unionite, kid from my hometown, uh, the great Issa Abdul Kadus. What's up, buddy? Not much is going on. <laughs> How you doing, man? You're a saint. <laughs> and also on the phone with us is uh, Miami Dolphin tight end, Anthony Fazano. Paisan, what's up? Hey, how you doing? What's Thanks going on? Me. What's going on, man? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. You're up, you got me up past my bedtime, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Jeez, I'll liven it up a little bit, Anthony. What <laughs> you're an NFL player. Let's start. <laughs> you play in Miami. Let's start getting loose. <laughs> what, 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 do you usually go to bed early? Uh, lately I have, yeah. Really? Yeah. Why? I've kind of just worn out the, uh, social scene in Miami a little bit. You've you know? worn out the I social scene in Miami? I gotta take my partying international. <laughs> I, I, I do my partying overseas. Really? Well, you know, you gotta be, because Miami, I don't know if you know this, I've watched TV and every once in a while I see this, Courtney and Chloe have taken over Miami. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the reason I, I don't <laughs> Can you do me a favor, because, do me a favor, as a, as a favor to all men, just bang the hell out of one of those two. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm sure they'd bang a dolphin. You know what I mean? Just just go and, and bang the crap out of Khloe Kardashian. Because Lamar's always on the road. You know what I mean? Wouldn't it be great if you were like the guy she cheats on Lamar with? I think that's going to be... It would be the first time a girl would leave a... Uh... A big NBA player for, for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine, though. That's all, well, no, I'm not saying she's going to leave him. Let's not like get carried away. You're right. I'm just saying, like, you know, he's on the road. He's a clipper, right? So he, she's shooting Courtney and Chloe, take Miami. And, you know, there's a, there's a lull in the action. And you're Anthony Fasano. <laughs> you're out at, I don't know, one of those stupid, goofy bars they have down there. Liquid or whatever jerk-off name they have. And, uh, you know, you're at a club, and, and you see her at the Fontainebleau. <laughs> or at uh, Prime 112 or something like that. And, uh, you know, just uh, she's a little lonely because uh, Lamar's on the road, and she says goodbye to him on the cell phone. Good night, honey, I'm going to bed. And you just tag her. <laughs> I'll look into that. <laughs> so you haven't gotten into the cocaine scene down there at all? No, no, you know, it hasn't really, uh, hasn't really gotten to, into me at all there. No. Right. Dude, that's that's a cure for going to bed early, I'll tell you. Be up I, I, I think my record is one time in Miami, I was up four straight days. Oh, wow. You had to see me at the end of that at the, wow. at the breakfast buffet at the Delano. <laughs> I was no, no kid. It was it was the it was the Super Bowl. Um, it was 1999, January of 99. The Super Bowl. It was when the Falcons played the Dolphins. Uh, not the no. They played in Miami. They, they played the the Broncos. The Broncos, the Broncos yeah. Whatever. Uh, I bet the Broncos. I had the under and I had the Broncos and uh, I won. I won money and uh, I got an eight ball and I got to tell you, I uh, I was up for four <laughs> days and the last day, um, the last day, I, no, I was at the breakfast buffet at the Delano and I was right in back of Marcus Allen and he was with two of the hottest blondes. I, like, like, like I, I literally was, just, I was sweating gravy. Okay? <laughs> I was, I was sweating and I was pale even though I was in Miami. I was in my clothes from, I, for four days I was in the same clothes. Right. And Marcus Allen was with two blondes getting like, uh, like sausage and bacon and uh and i remember he looked at me and he gave me that look like <laughs> he looked at me and went Whew. <laughs> you're in rough shape <laughs> so uh my, my my point is uh you're right for not doing that anthony you, you should stay in shape hey hey anthony um you had a big year this year with the quarterback uh, uh ryan Tannehill. before we get to that though you're a notre dame guy um what do you think of the irish i mean they're back huh almost almost back to national title yeah. contention it was great. It was a great year. Uh, you know, finally, a bunch of years since I left, uh, you know, not really having much bragging rights in the locker room. But finally, this year is great. Uh, besides that game at the end, uh, it's fun to watch all year long. Now, now, uh, uh, Anthony, when you were at Notre Dame, how many phony girlfriends did you have? <laughs> 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 Can I just say this? You're, I, mean, I don't have any. Uh, listen, you, you're a Notre Dame guy. How embarrassing is that? How embarrassing is that? I mean, the, the guy. Yeah, it's a shame. It's, it's a shame. It is. Who knows what yeah. happened? But I mean, whatever happened, it, it's a shame. It's a, it's a shitty situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't curse, but that's all right. I mean, listen, we're all men here, and you got to curse at that point. What about you, Issa? Issa, uh, Issa Abdullah Kadus from the Saints is here too. Anthony talking to us. Uh, what do you hey, think of that? But, 
that's just a crazy situation. I would have never guessed that would happen to somebody on a big stage like that. You yeah, know? I mean, you think this kid seems like a good-looking kid? Would you ever allow yourself to be catfished? No, not at all. No. I wouldn't. Even, I wouldn't even put myself in a position where I have an internet relationship. Right, with right. At some point, at some point, like Anthony, uh, at some point, what t do you go? Like, hey, can I see your ass? Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, can, can I touch you? <laughs> at what point, after, after a year, do you go? When can I touch you? <laughs> right? I mean, when is that appropriate? <laughs> I hope uh, I hope within a year. <laughs> yeah, within a year, you should be allowed to touch a girlfriend. You know? <laughs> uh, that's just sad. Then now, do do do, uh, Aunt, uh, do you have people uh, now uh, playing in Miami and uh, you, you know you two uh, you two Issa in, in New Orleans? Those are two party towns. Are uh, are the the girls the situation down here with girls? Is it a lot more difficult than say if you were playing in like you know Green Bay or something? It's probably a lot lot mm -hmm. more to handle, right? Well, for me in Miami, I, I played in Dallas before here, uh, and it was two pretty good cities. So I haven't really been in a uh, uh, a podunk city to to experience that. So I've been pretty fortunate. Yeah. Now uh, you uh, you mentioned Tannehill before. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's he's a good. This rookie class of quarterbacks. I mean, Tannehill is kind of the forgotten guy, but Anthony, he's uh, he's pretty good. You got to feel about the franchise going forward with him, right? Yeah, I do. I think uh, one of the good things is he improved pretty much every week. Um, you know, he, he, we didn't turn the ball over much, and he's gotten better and better in his decision-making and his experience. Um, you know, so I think he's going to have a real bright future, and, uh, you know, Miami fans have something to be excited about. Hey, who was who was the best rookie quarterback this year, in your estimation? Uh, it's, it's tough. There was a great crop. Um, I think... Uh, RG3 in, you know, Washington is pretty electric and, and fun to watch, um, you know, if he can stay healthy. But Andrew Luck, I think, uh, is pretty special. He'll be, he'll be a great uh, player in this league for a long time. Yeah, I'd love to see those two in a Super Bowl sooner or later. But as a, as a defensive back, Issa, you know, you got these, this new breed of quarterback who runs all the time. Kaepernick we're going to see and uh, Wilson, RG3, they get out there. Um, as, as a DB, do you, do you really want to hit these guys harder? Do you, do you like, this is my territory. What are you doing out here? <laughs> yeah, because it's annoying, man. It's, it's, uh, like, they look at their first and second read. They don't have it. They can just run, you know. It's like annoying. You, you're on third down, third and five or something like that. Right. And you're saying, all right, we covered everybody, so the down's over. But they just break out and run. You All know, of a sudden, they're it, running. Yeah, man. It's like, as soon as you get a piece of them, you want to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> now, again, see, that's honesty. That's honesty. Uh, on, you know, but that, and that's what the NFL, that's what made the NFL that attitude. Do you think uh, it's it, it's going towards it's going to be either extinct or a two-hand touch league? I'm mean, Anthony, uh, you playing tight end. Uh, how many concussions have you had? Uh, I think I've had two or three on record. Yeah. Um, mm. But, uh, you know, as an offensive player, the rules kind of favor us. So, I mean, I really don't mind it. But uh, I see how it can uh, be frustrating for defensive players or, or somewhat take away from the game that everyone grew up learning how to play a certain way. And, and to change it at this level uh, that quickly is, is really tough to do. Uh, I know the NFL is trying to make an effort to make it safer. It's just uh, it's tough all the way around. It's, I almost look at uh, the world of comedy is the same because, uh, you know, I, I was brought up uh, with Eddie Murphy and George Carlin and Richard Pryor, Sam Kinison, and, and you could say a bunch of things in, in your comedy act that you can't say anymore. And it's kind of the same thing. Like, you, you got, you're going to have to make an adjustment, like Anthony says, as a defensive player. Like, there's certain words that Eddie Murphy said in his first special on HBO that I grew up loving that you can't say. If you say them, your career's over. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and I'm not kidding. And, and, and you, uh, you have to adjust and, 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 and say different things and become a different type of comedian. I think in your career, Issa, you're, you're, you're so young, you're going to have to make a lot of changes. How do you feel about that? I mean, it's all about just aiming point, honestly, because, I mean, you can avoid the helmet hits and everything if you get a little lower. But, I mean, sometimes it's just like football because, I mean, right. you, you try to hit somebody, they lower their shoulder a little bit, you hit the helmet, now it's a 15-yard penalty. Right. But it's like, I mean, it's like a lose-lose. If, if you try to, like, play safer, you might miss the tackle and, like, play a lot differently. But if you, if you like, don't think about it, you might get a 15-yard penalty and cost your team. I know. It's very difficult. But you, like you say, Anthony, it, uh, it makes sense. It's, it's better for the offensive players. Yeah, yeah exactly. And Anthony, as you kind of look at this matchup this week with Baltimore, San Francisco, who, who do you like and why in this Super Bowl? Um, 
you know, it's tough. I think it's going to be a great game. Look forward to watching it uh, with two, you know, two of probably the best defenses uh, in the league. Um, I would have to go against um, my conference and, and pick probably the 49ers. Yeah. Um, just, just because I think they uh, they play really well together, and I think they're hot, you know, and uh, I think it all depends on the quarterback play. And Kaepernick has uh, surprised me, pleasantly surprised me, you know, throughout the second half of the year and the playoffs. So I think he's uh, in a good groove and he's going to play well. That kid is, and he's, and he's got an arrogance about him that works for him too, because he doesn't he doesn't get shaken, man. Like he's he's a cocky kid. And uh, he's good under pressure. Like, when they're down points, he's just like uh, – he said it in the, the post-game interview. He said, well, we just had to score points and play defense, you know, and play football. That's how you win. Um, I think – I agree with you. I think uh, that Ray Lewis, you know, I think the, the fair tale is going to end, even though I'd like yeah. to see him win. Um, he's older. He's slower. Reed in the secondary for the Ravens. Same thing. They're a little slower. Uh, you can't teach youth. Uh, I think Kaepernick's going to get out there, and I, th- I think he's going to run all over the place. I think it's going to be a blowout. I really do. And you said, what do you think about that? I don't know, man. I like I liked how the Ravens are playing this pre- this uh this postseason whatnot, yeah. you know. But the 49ers, they're also a physical team, so it's going to be a good matchup. But I kind of see like Ray Lewis getting his like his shine. He gets you to think walk, so? out, walk out on top and winning. Getting the Super Bowl. second ring. It's it's, mm-hmm. it, it's interesting with Kaepernick. The guy is seven and two as a starter, and we talk about that read option and the pistol and Anthony. I, I'd be interested in asking you, is, is, is this going to go away in a couple of years? Is it just a quick little fad, this pistol and the, really the read option? Is, or is this here to stay for a while in your mind? I think the game's changing. You know, these players are growing up and, and learning football a different way and being, you know, really taught a lot of detail in college. And this is how they play. So I think they're going to come up and, and make an impact for a long time in the NFL. I think the one thing is staying healthy. You know, it's going to be tough to – to run against defenses um, like there are in the league and, and stay healthy for these quarterbacks and different type of slash players. So um, I think it's here to stay if they find a way to get down and avoid some of the hits and uh, prolong their career a little bit. Yeah, the game's changing at the perfect time for these rules to change, too, because if you're going to have these guys running into the secondary, these quarterbacks where it's a no man's land, you're going to want the rules to favor them. You know, because uh, in the old days, <laughs> like in the days of Jack Tatum and right. stuff. Like, imagine, Absolutely. Imagine like Terry Bradshaw or someone <laughs> getting into the secondary and Jack Tatum just taking his head off. Uh, you can't do that anymore. You can't go for the head. Uh, and, you know, look, as a guy who grew up in the 70s and 80s watching it, uh, that's that's football to me. I don't know. It's like taking fighting out of hockey. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Who, who'd you grow up watching, Anthony? Who'd you kind of pattern yourself after? Who'd you root for? I grew up in Jersey, um, so I was a Giants fan. Um, I didn't really pat myself out for anybody, but uh, you know, I was a big fan of Phil Sims and Mark Bavaro, Dave Meggett, uh, Lawrence Taylor, all those guys. Yeah, um, yeah you got to so love I had some good years. <laughs> yeah, you got to love uh, Taylor. Good years man. being a Giants fan. Yeah, Taylor was. Uh, I'll never forget um, being in Giant Stadium. Uh, listening to the, the the guy who was the announcer in Giant Stadium was the same guy in Yankee Stadium he uh, Bob Shepard he was the guy who said uh, you're too young for this he said but he used to announce like Derek Jeter he'd say now batting for the Yankees number two Derek Jeter <laughs> and he also did the, he also did the Giant game so Taylor was so good when he was young he was in on every tackle so this guy this guy would have to say who got tackled and everything would end with the two words and Taylor. <laughs> like he would go, Wilbert Montgomery up the middle, gain of two, spilled by Van Pelt, Carson, and Taylor. <laughs>